All right, y'all, let's get this party started. Today in this video, we are going to be talking about the motor setup that you see back there. And while I'm doing it, we're gonna be doing a little bit of fishing. Um, but the wind, as you can probably notice, is absolutely cranking. And that wasn't a part of the plan, but we're gonna have to go get into a protected area so I can do a little more talking. Molly came out and chased that. Fish him. Not a huge one, but that'll get us started. Got him on the old Gobi Grumpies. All right, just a little guy. It's not exactly why we're out here. I do want to give you guys a little rundown of this motor, but I'm gonna be fishing while I'm doing it, so hopefully a few more of these will interrupt us. A few bigger ones. I'm not even gonna score that one yet. All right, in any case, the primary purpose of this video today is to give you an overview of my NK180S Newport Vessels kayak motor, electric motor, powered by a 24 volt battery. So if you're watching this video, you have a topwater PDL, you are just curious about the motor in general, or you probably like rigging, and fantastic, you're in the right place. So let's talk about this first thing in regards to the topwater PDL and its installation. This boat is gonna require, especially the older models like mine, I think I got this in 2019. Um, this is gonna require for you to cut into the kayak in a fairly significant way. So what I did is used a three inch hole saw and I cut into the back, which you guys can actually see right there, so that I could have access to the inside of the hole in the back because these shorter older models do not have the nice flat plate uh, beneath the rudder or the rudder storage area that is in order to drill into and then potentially install a hatch had that been possible i would have gone that route so i recommend installing a hatch if you have the longer 12 foot version of this boat but if you do not you are going to have to cut into it and it's really not that hard to do if you know how to plastic weld, which is very easy by a cheap plastic welder, you can essentially cut that piece out with a hole saw. The circle will stay intact and you can actually just keep that piece of plastic and plastic weld that back on there. And that seals it up completely. And so really, if you have no other reason to get in there, that's a perfect solution and it really isn't as scary as it seems. Got another smiley. This one's a little better. I thought I saw one on a bed over there. Decent man. all right so back to talking about the motor sorry for the small mouth interruption but we are doing some fishing out here today so there is one other option for covering up that three inch hole that you do have to make in the shorter versions of the pdl and you can just cover it up with a metal cover and a gasket kind of like a little circular electric box cover i don't know exactly what it is um, but it does the job and it has a little gasket that you can put between it and uh, the kayak hole, which keeps water from getting in there. You can seal that up with silicon. And so that's worked out just fine for me and that gives uh, more access to it because you don't have to cut through the plastic or undo the plastic welding that you do if you do need to access it again. So I originally made that hole for my power pole mount and never had any issues with the uh, plastic breaking or flexing or anything like that. So um, I say 
it's not really a big deal to go ahead and cut into your kayak and really to get the best uh, mount for this motor you kind of have to let's go ahead and fire it up and get over to our next spot where i think there might be a few fish hanging out Another thing you want to consider if you are thinking about buying a Newport Vessels NK-180S for a topwater PDL specifically, and I think if you have to do any sort of modification for any other kayak, is creating your own mounting plate if there's not one available um, from HDPE thick hard plastic. I think I did a half inch HDPE and I just cut a mount, a rectangle shaped mount that I could drill holes through in the same bolt pattern as both the power pole and the motor. And so really what that does is protects the plastic of the kayak because it distributes the force that's being applied to the bracket itself and not directly on the plastic uh, of the kayak. But uh, to be honest, I have used a power pole mount without anything under it directly on the topwater PDL hole and I never had a single issue with it. No flexing, no cracks, no nothing. The plastic in these boats is just super durable, super strong. I don't worry about it at all, dragging it across hard stuff, whatever. It's perfectly fine. It's got a lifetime warranty for a reason offered by Old Town. So I do, however, if you're gonna double up on accessories like I have, recommend making your own, your own mount there. fish maybe not the same size might just be killing the males took my goby bait another one interrupting the video so because I had to go through the plastic mounting bracket and also down into the kayak, I just used leftover power pole mounting hardware and it's a little longer than I needed, but it definitely does the job and gets down there. And obviously nylon lock nuts to secure things with washers on the inside, it's highly advisable. And one thing you're going to want to do, even with the bolts that come with the motor itself, you really need to buy a drill attachment for Allen heads. It makes your life a whole lot easier. Trying to do it with a wrench and a, you know just normal Allen keys, gonna take you forever. Gonna be super annoying. Honestly, just get drill bits, buy them on Amazon, buy a set so you can do it quick. Hold one end with the with the wrench, drill down in there uh, with the right Allen attachment, and you'll be good to go. It's a hell of a lot easier than the other way, which I did on my power pole. So. Take that piece of advice if nothing else. All right, so let's talk power. This motor runs on a 24 volt battery and I opted for a 24 volt 30 amp hour battery uh, from a little web store called to2battery.com. The battery is offered at a really great price point. 30 amp hours is really more than enough for me most of the time. I've yet to actually run it all the way down. I've gone up and down a river, up and down a river, still haven't quite gotten there. So on full blast, it is supposed to give you about an hour and a half of runtime. Um, and that, if you're going about four and a half miles an hour, um, puts you close to seven miles of range, which is pretty darn good. And frankly, I mean, I don't foresee myself making runs that are much longer than that. 
Well, another thing about the battery that I really like for this kayak specifically is that it fits in the rear hatch. And there are very few batteries 30 amp hour and above that are gonna fit in that rear hatch. And I didn't want to take up any more space in the back there because my space is already limited, it being the smaller size kayak anyway, my tackle box. I really didn't want to have a battery box back there that I'd have to build and spend money on in addition to the battery itself. So instead, uh, I've just rigged up a system where I can put it in the rear hatch, close it up, and really forget about it. And it doesn't really slide around. It doesn't feel like it adds a whole lot of weight. It comes in at about 13 pounds. Really, that's not that much of a difference in a kayak that's already pretty loaded down anyway uh, with tackle gear and uh, other fish finder batteries and things like that. So another benefit of this battery actually fitting in the hatch is I don't really have to worry about any environmental uh, conditions affecting it or a battery box potentially. And so what I did to really seal it up and keep it completely protected is I used Yak Attack through hole wiring kit and I drilled into the hole and cut out a little hole for that for my positive and negative wire to come out of. And then I used environmental boots over the Anderson SB50 ports and I can seal those up completely when they're locked in with one another. So even if it's pouring down rain, it's getting drenched, everything is wet, um, there is no water getting into those connections and really I didn't want any water touching the connections or the battery and the battery is really at its driest point in the kayak in, in this kayak specifically in the hatch. I don't get a whole lot of water in my hole and if I do it's because it's pouring and actually the way the battery sits in the hole keeps it above the lowest point. So you really don't have to worry about the battery getting wet inside the hole either although I am going to wrap it one more time just to keep any sort of condensation or moisture out from the from the cells that are inside of that blue wrap. And so one thing to note when you are trying to decide what kind of battery you should get, either way, the kit that comes with the motor actually comes with extra wiring. And so I, I went ahead and bought red and black wiring on Amazon prior to figuring this out, but it does come with wiring for you to wire up your own connections. Yeah, there's, there's more than enough to do so for you to do really whatever you're planning with the battery. So I wouldn't worry about buying any sort of uh, wiring that's all done and in the kit for you the kit is pretty complete which is another benefit so with the super light pedal I'm getting about four and a half four point six four point seven miles an hour uh, which is pretty good. The water's pretty calm. I think we got the wind more or less at our back. I'm at 99%, 98%. Normally it's at 100. I've never seen it do that. All right, let's continue speed test. Right now I'm going into the wind, not pedaling, bouncing back between 4.2, 4.5, 4.3, holding fairly steady. Got a really strong wind in our face you can probably hear it now a little bit of pedal help i'm gonna push that 4.5 4 8 8 4.6 4.5 4 4.4 i have been able to get five miles an hour uh, but it was in pretty calm water uh, a little bit of wind at my back in the river going downstream i'm able to definitely get over five but there's a little bit of cavitation that's happening. Uh, so the prop is spinning and then it's spinning super fast because it's hitting air and then um, really causes a, an uneven draw from the battery. You can see it kind of bouncing around here if you guys can see that. But that's really the only downside of the motor that I've found so far. I'm not pedaling too hard right now. And an easy 4.3 and for reference my Bixby only went uh, three and a half really at the most could maybe get four with the wind at my back in really good conditions but this is uh, averaging well over four so I'm pretty happy with it on a wide boat like this this isn't very streamlined I got a decent amount of weight in here myself included tackle battery battery box up front so yeah overall it's pretty good 
So another thing you're gonna need to mount is the throttle control. And I chose a little Garmin fish finder mount that has composite ram balls. So this would be the ball that's in the track. This is the piece to tighten it down, adjustable. And then I took the ram mount that goes on the bottom of the fish finder. Um, I didn't put any uh, bolts in there, as you can see, or machine screws or anything. Instead, I used Velcro. And that Velcro keeps this on there just fine. It's actually really super tight. When I uh, load and unload the kayak, I actually take this off and put it on. And it's really that easy. It's adjustable. I can move it however I want to on a given day. But I wouldn't plan on, on this really staying put because that means that you are undoing the cable that runs to the, the motor. And generally, I don't think that this is weather resistant enough for you to leave it out all the time. Obviously, it depends on your storage situation, but in any case, I wouldn't want this out on the trailer. So I take this whole module in with me every time I unload the motor itself, and it's worked out just fine. I like it a lot. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. I've still got room for my eyelet down here and my uh, core tightener. Give you guys some final thoughts on the uh, motor. So far, it has treated me quite well. I've had no issues with it once I got it all set up and everything. You know, I was worried about the weight that it would add, but really it's not that noticeable. And when I'm pulling my kayak up on the trailer, it's not too bad. Even when the motor is pulled up, it doesn't make much of a difference when you're pedaling around. I can't tell. If the motor is down and in the water, it does make steering uh, a little bit difficult because the motor is in a fixed position. It has a fin on it. Your rudder is turning, but that fin is still locked straight forward. So that kind of makes turning a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I've learned just to pop the motor up when I'm not using it because it just gets in the way really of turning. Aside from that and the cavitation that happens sometimes, I really have no complaints. This thing has been awesome. It's got quite a bit of power. Well, I wish I could average over five miles an hour, but this boat just isn't really designed for speed. It's designed for stability. Really, I'm not gonna complain. Overall, if I had to compare this motor to the Bixby, uh, which I had previously, I would give this um, a higher rating just because of the power and the speed. The Bixby is a pretty light setup, um, but for this kayak, it's kind of annoying because I have to pop out the little console that I made for it, put it in while the pedals are up, and it's just a little more work. This, I pull the motor up, put it down, tear it on and off, the kayak pretty easily throw it in the car and go no special storage needed same thing with the big speed but uh really for the money with the motor being 999 dollars i actually got a deal on amazon it dropped down to 850 so i snagged it and then i spent 300 dollars on my battery and charger let's call it nine with tax 1200 dollars total for the battery and the motor that's about what it costs for a big speed anyway and you get more power, you get more range, and you always have the option to use a bigger battery if you want. So really, between the Bixby and the Newport, I'm gonna have to go with the NK180S. It's been a great little motor so far for me, and I uh, can't wait to get it out on some longer runs here on the lake. I'll probably be doing that this weekend if uh, the weather permits. Hopefully I have some more fishing content for you guys then. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off and keep fishing my way back. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.